Today we celebrate the Mass of the fifth Sunday in the ordinary time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, <clears throat> we join in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today to ask for the Lord's goodness to ourselves, our family, and all the world. With that in mind, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the source of all blessing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you are our redemption and our hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you bring us to the joy of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care. That relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading for the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise, then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. The dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. He heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly. The wicked he casts to the ground. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, <clears throat> this is no reason for me to boast, 
for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to serve, save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and in finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The first reading of the Mass today gives us one of the most fascinating persons of the Bible. His name is Job. Job is a good man, a faithful man, and a man who has enjoyed many blessings. And then he is put to the test. Is he faithful to God because that is the right thing to do? Or is he faithful to God because good things have come to him? And so God allows Job to experience hardships, the loss of many things, even the abandonment of many so-called friends who are really not friends at all. Job is suffering. In the reading today, he cries out, I have been assigned months of misery. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My life is like a wind. I shall not see happiness again. You can hear Job's pain speaking, but Job never loses faith in God. Pope Francis says this, Job feels forlorn and misunderstood, and yet for all his extreme frailty, he chooses the path of honesty towards God and others. He cries out to God so insistently that God finally answers him 
and allows him to see something new. God confirms that Job's suffering is not a punishment for his sins or a state of separation for God, much less a sign of God's indifference to him. And Job's heart, wounded and now healed, then makes this vibrant and touching confession to the Lord, I had heard of you by word of mouth, but now, Lord, my eye has seen you. Job has passed the test, and God rewards him with more than he had before. Job's suffering has not conquered him. His faith and his trust in God have gotten him through. It is good for us, dear friends, to think of Job today as we witness the suffering that this pandemic has caused. How many people have said, how long will this go on? And probably all of us have said those words too. How long will we be worried about the virus? Understandably so. How long will grandparents <clears throat> not be able to hug their grandchildren? How often will we not be able to gather our whole family together, including those we missed at Thanksgiving or Christmas time? How often must children be limited in what they can do, where they can sit in school, and how they relate to their friends? How long? And if you have said those things, then Job is very much your spiritual friend because he said the same things and felt the same way. Yet for all his questioning, Job remained faithful to God. Job admitted that he did not have the answer to suffering. In fact, he said that he put his fingers over his mouth and would not try to question God. What faith Job had. Dear friends, we are all called to be the modern day Job's. We know that we do not have the answer. We know what suffering is, either for ourselves or for those we love but we try to hold on to our faith. I have heard many people telling me that strange as it may seem, they have grown in their faith during this pandemic time. They realize how much they need God and they realize how precious their faith really is. And they realize that their faith will get them through. But faith needs strength, and that strength comes through prayer. Notice the Gospel today says that after our Lord cures the many people who come to him, he rises very early before dawn and goes off to a deserted place to pray. Prayer is always essential, but it is especially essential at this pandemic time. Your prayers, not only for yourself, but for all who are sick and suffering, are needed now more than ever. This Thursday, Pope Francis has asked us to observe a world day of prayer for the sick. Let me use the Pope's words. This day of prayer <clears throat> is an opportunity to devote, to devote special attention to the sick and to those who provide them with assistance and care. We think in particular of those who have suffered and continue to suffer the effects of this worldwide coronavirus pandemic. To all I express my spiritual closeness and assure them of the Church's loving concern. 
the Pope selected February 11 as the World Day of Prayer for the Sick because it is the feast of the appearance of our Blessed Mother Mary at Lourdes. In 1858, Our Lady appeared to a 14-year-old girl, Bernadette Subaru, and identified herself by saying, I am the Immaculate Conception. And since then, countless millions of people have gone to Lourdes to pray for a cure, as we hear our Lord doing in the Gospel today. But not only a physical cure, but to pray also for spiritual curing, a curing of the soul, and a strengthening of faith. On Thursday, pray, of course, for those who are physically sick, so many suffering from the virus, but pray also that your faith will grow, that our Lord and our Blessed Mother will give you the strength of faith that you need at this time. And remember, pray for those who are caring for the sick. Pope Francis especially mentions them. Let me use his words again. The pandemic has also highlighted the dedication and generosity of healthcare personnel, all of whom have served so many of the sick and their families with professionalism, self-giving, responsibility, and love of neighbor. A silent multitude of men and women. They chose not to look the other way, but to share the suffering of their patients, whom they saw as neighbors and members of the one human family. Such closeness is a precious comfort that provides support and consolation to the sick in their suffering. It is the sign of the love of Jesus Christ, the Good Samaritan, who draws near with compassion to every one of us. And the best way, dear friends, that you can thank doctors and nurses and all the others is to pray for them. Do not hesitate to tell them that you are doing so. Job remained faithful to God despite all that was happening in his life. May we stay faithful to the Lord and help one another to do so. And may our Blessed Mother Mary, whom we honor as health of the sick, help us to grow ever stronger in our faith in Jesus, her Son. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy Cardinal Dole, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to continue to grow in faith and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Then as we observe this week the World Day of Prayer for the Sick, we will be mindful to pray for those who are sick in body, mind, and soul, we pray to the Lord. That our Blessed Mother Mary, who appeared in Lourdes, and whose feast day we celebrate this Thursday, will help us to be strong in faith and in our trust in the compassion of Jesus, her Son, we pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, that they will continue in their vocation of serving the sick and the suffering, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, particularly those suffering from the virus, and for our beloved dead, especially the departed members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life, and one day bring us safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away our iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse us from our sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord <clears throat> accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our prayer, Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, out of compassion <clears throat> for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this altar to change bread and wine into his body and blood. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become the rest, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same the way, <clears throat> when Sepha was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the Lord of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <clears throat> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, you are saved through eternal life. Amen. We now invite you to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart. Let us pray. O God, who through this holy sacrament have given us new life, grant, we pray, that we may live one in Christ, and that we might bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we give you the blessing, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We continue to pray for you and for your family. May the Lord keep all of you in safety and good health. 
The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.